Photography Daily. It still stands for the same thing, you know, those those old cameras, the Polaroids, the Instamatics. They were about sharing your life, they're about sharing fun times, you know, sharing moments with friends. Since Instagram made the announcement that they would no longer solely be a photo sharing app, many creators, or if you will, photographers, have been running in all directions, not sure of whether their Insta world may implode. Even just two years ago, I would see a photo and I would stare at it for a very long time. Mm. Whereas nowadays, I don't look at it for so long. Have we become desensitised to the amount of pictures Instagram serves up? Well, photographer Johnny Keeley, who's making his YouTube and Instagram ascent in tandem, seemed a good creator to talk with as he's been studying the changes in a series of films. I look at some people's feeds and, you know, I feel like I'm 10% of, of the journey. You know, this I, I, incredible stuff happens on that platform. I talk with Johnny about some of the changes expected. There's a few things that I, I really love about other platforms that serve through recommendations. YouTube, content that you worked hard on six months ago might suddenly appear on people's feeds. I really like that. We chat about what he's found looking at others' grids and building his own. I think if you want someone to understand what you do very quickly, then consistency is a very good idea. I talk with Johnny Keeley about a more personal approach to posting. And I hate saying it this way because it feels so reductive, but the way to keep people is to let them get to know you. I'll be reading out some of your thoughts, some strong opinions too, after a post made in our Facebook group about the future of Instagram. And I'll be talking to a friend of the show, Helen Jones Florio, who has a project I personally follow. A photographer who's been posting not for the likes, but for the sheer joy of sharing a personal project about doors and shop fronts across Malta and the Gambia. This is something, it's my, it's mine, it's my my passion. It really is a passion, I love it. And I never get bored, I've got, honestly, I've got thousands of thousands of... Doors, doors and more doors and every day suddenly a new one to shoot. My husband's got really used to me just, oh, we're on the back of the motorbike, I'm on the back of the motorbike, stop! Grace in decay, doors and storefronts, it's on Insta, but how important is the engagement? To be honest, it's kind of like, it's for me really just to just to see what comes back so helen jones florio with the approach of simply enjoying making her pictures and johnny keely building a social media presence with a message equally that we should keep calm and carry on posting he says don't panic i genuinely think that instagram are just saying that if you were to define instagram it is no longer going to be defined as a photo app I look at our fascinating back catalogue of guests who use the platform, and I guess you may say that Pete Souza, President Obama's photographer, could lay claim so far to the highest Insta engagement. 2.9 million followers, tens of thousands of engagement with each post, and often hundreds of comments alongside. And then equally I look at the grids owned by other talented photographers who've appeared on this show who photograph with well-known organisations and stroke for agencies who don't enjoy, if that's the correct term, similar platform success, if success is to be rated by the currency of likes, or engagement, that is. So what is it that makes some grids more successful and what's the plan moving forward for folk who want to use it for business and those who just enjoy the way it was? To help us then, two guests who use the platform for, I think, differing intentions. And it's a, a chat that's ably assisted by some incredibly thought-provoking content provided by friends of the show who are members of Photography Daily's Facebook group who've written in. We'll not answer all the burning questions, thoughts, concerns or other that you have about Instagram, I know, but we will, I hope, give you food for thought. I kind of feel like I've picked up this debate and put it in a big experimental mixing pot out of which you may have further thoughts for me to feature in a photo walk edition. Patron of the day today is Mike South, and I've chosen him for good reason. He has an Instagram grid that's clearly concentrated upon a cohesive flow of pictures about a subject, as he writes in his description, a photographer with a passion for costume, history and fantasy, based Brighton, UK. I'll link to his Instagram profile on the show page, and it's almost as if he's been listening to today's first guest, Johnny Keeley, about having a, a clear message for your audience, or, or followers, or whatever we're supposed to call them. Your portraits, particularly the First World War soldiers, in costume, frankly make me feel like I'm, I'm there, Mike, and I mean that. These could so easily be movie, TV, set, photography, pictures, and I'm left as a, a viewer in no doubt how adept you are behind your camera telling these stories about history. It's a great grid to go and see, and I uh, recommend you visit the show page today for all the links, actually, that are in the show. 
And before we dive into this subject of Instagram, how do you fancy winning a classic? Big question mark. The Hasselblad 500cm. Give me half a minute or so and I'll tell you how this beauty can be yours. We're supported, as you know, by our friends at mpb.com, the people and website to go to if you want to buy, sell or trade used camera gear safely in the US, the UK or Europe. And right now it's MPB's Photo and Video Kit Hall of Fame 2021, with voting ending on the 6th of August. Uh, a committee of world-renowned photographers, journalists and influencers have selected nominees in five categories. Classic, Game Changer, Iconic, road tested and trendsetter and now it's time for you to vote on the best photo and video kit of the digital age so go to mpb.com and their blog and you'll see how you can vote in there by casting your vote you have this chance to win the 2020 iconic inductee Hasselblad 500 cm Finn Bills is our guest next week though you'll hear a little of his forthcoming interview on the photo walk this week uh, he's an award-winning travel, lifestyle and commercial photographer based in Wales who works in this fascinating cinematic style. And Finn is one of those involved in the Hall of Fame. So, deep breath, stand by, Instagram. Honestly, you could do a complete week on this, perhaps more. But I'd like to at least make a start, and I've lent upon some friends too to create what I think can be a growing debate now, I know a good number of photographers who just don't use the platform now for all sorts of reasons, or if they are, they're wrestling with it to a degree, myself included when it comes to my social photography profile, which I haven't touched at the time of writing since 25th of February 2020, pretty much a month to the day prior to our first national lockdown in the UK, that is. Now that's a story for another day. But I, I've linked to this, by the way, the Photographic Eye YouTube channel, which I've been following for a little while now, thanks to Neil Ford, it raised an interesting question in the latest film offering, where the subject of discontentment was mentioned for thousands of Instagrammers who have, quote, bought into this idea that the only way to be considered a photographer is to harvest likes and followers. If no one saw your photography because Insta stopped sharing still images, how would that change you as a photographer? And then Vivian Meyer is cleverly weaved into the thought-provoking piece about sharing your images and how the find of a photographic generation, perhaps more, would, quote once again, bring into question the very idea that you should need to show your photographs to anyone at all. It's a thought, isn't it? So let's meet our first guest, Johnny Keeley, who has, I think, been looking at Instagram carefully over the last few months, making YouTube films about his thoughts and observations and research about the platform. Titles such as Instagram is destroying the planet, Instagram monetization is coming, the end of Instagram hashtags, and a film that piqued my interest a month ago, Instagram isn't for photographers. And that is where we'll start. Johnny, you make the case right from the outset in the, the film, which we'll link to, Instagram isn't for photographers, that we could be forgiven for thinking that the platform is for us. I mean, the logo does the job for a start, doesn't it? Um, I, I wonder what logo they, they may choose these days. I, I think the thing is, it still stands for the same thing. You know, those those old cameras, the Polaroids, the Instamatics, they were about sharing your life. They're about sharing fun times, you know, sharing moments with friends. Yeah. You know, I sound a bit like I'm working for Instagram. I'm not, <laughs> but you know, that, that, that video you mentioned, that was the point of the video. And I think it still stands. It's just that the, the medium has changed. If, if people could have shared videos on little bits of paper that take 20 seconds to develop, they would have done back yeah. then. And, you know, that's what Instagram was based on. And I think, to be honest, it still stands for that. And that's why I'm personally not quite as negative towards the changes that were announced as many others are. There's been a lot of negativity towards it. You, so many people say, I'm coming off, I'm finding something else. On, on the face of it, Instagram looks like it should be the perfect portfolio. And, and perhaps that was initially. What, what Has your mind changed at all? Stop thinking of photography as a skill, you said, more of an extension of your personality, which I thought was quite interesting in terms of how you, you could use the, the platform successfully yeah i mean i think that obviously discounts you know high-end professional photography that is highly skilled i'm talking about in the context of instagram the photography you see on there is you know you can really see someone from it you can really understand who that person is from their photography whereas if you were to look at the cover of a uh, fashion magazine you might not understand the photographer through through the the, the image that you're seeing 
Whereas I think if you're on the platform of Instagram and you see it all in context, mm. you're, you're understanding much more about that person's personality uh, if they're using the platform how most, most people do these days. So I'm wondering um, in terms of curation, see, when I look at your grid, it's very earthy, lots of greens, lots of, you know, earthy tones. And there's a an, there's an natural flow and a progress. I mean, it's, it's like reading a book, to be honest. I think, OK, mm. well, this works page to page, diptychs and triptychs almost. Is that the way that you, you think that it should successfully be used then, in, instead of like, let's pick everything up and throw it at it? And, and Because the pick it up and throw it at it would suggest that's the personality, but you're saying maybe be more careful in the way that you, that you curate it. Or am I reading that wrongly? I think that it's really, what do you want your Instagram account to look like? What do you want your gallery to look like? Yeah. And I think it would the same would apply on someone's website. If, if they had all their videos in a grid, they may just throw them up there they may intentionally put them in a like a checkerboard pattern or they may put complementative you know images next to each other i think but in terms of the optimization of it it depends what you're trying to convey really i think if you want someone to understand what you do very quickly then consistency is a very good idea because they're going to look at your images and understand straight away if you're a you know fashion photographer they're going to understand straight away that you're a fashion photographer yeah but in terms of, I think the game has changed a little bit. I think people are over that. Everyone's understanding that it's stressful to try and maintain it. But honestly, I, I have no outside stress. I don't care what people think of my grid. It's, it's genuinely just that sometimes it bothers me if I've got, you know, two horizons next to each other that don't line up, you know, so I just, I tend to put flat block like images. It might be an image of a moon, something that, that where it completely fills the space between those two just because you know that that line not <laughs> matching will bother me um why i don't know but i've, I've seen i've seen a few moons you have a couple of moons on at least three or four i think i saw yeah i kind of use my bookends <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they can reset what i'm trying to do um you'll notice that actually if you go through um you'll I did. see that yeah i saw the moon <laughs> normally represents me changing something which is you know no one's ever going to see it. well, it's, it's a like subtle a, change. i suppose it's like in the film world it's a dissolve your moon is a version of a dissolve isn't it fade to yeah. black fade to black yeah That's exactly it. and the thing is as well i look at some people's feeds and you know i feel like i'm 10 percent of, of the journey you know know this I, I, incredible stuff happens on that platform i've seen there's one artist I, I can't recall the name but she's a photographer and she manages to just go through the spectrum of mm. colors all the way through her images you'd never notice it from looking at one image or maybe even two or three but when you scroll through it goes through the spectrum of color and it's just incredible yeah. so the head of insta adam missouri uh, posted a video after you'd made your film um that we're specifically talking about and in it he said we're no longer a photo sharing app, and that's when the explosion happened, wasn't it? As you you might expect, would your film have been different had you had he released that message first? Because there you were talking about, look, if you you know, express your personality ra rather than thinking it all has to be beautiful photographs, just show your personality. Whereas he's saying, oh, hang on a minute, we're we're going to come away from photographs, and you're going to see a lot more video content. Uh, the, the video would obviously be different because I would yeah. probably address the things he said, but the 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 sentiment in that video was really just about sharing yourself, sh expressing yourself through whatever means you want to, but if you want to optimize it through whatever means Instagram prefer to share. So I don't think that Instagram are, you know, I think people have misunderstood his message that you may, that may be his fault, but I genuinely think that Instagram are just saying that if you were to define Instagram, it is no longer going to be defined right. as a photo app. It is going to be defined as a social media. Just, you know, for example, you take a, you take Twitter, you know, you could still just about define it as a text-based social media, even though it's full of images. It still really is about that character count. Take TikTok, you could define it as a video. You know, it's not photos. And Instagram has been a photo app this whole time mm -hmm. and it has had video for a very long time. So I think really all he's saying, I may be wrong, um, all he's saying is that now this is going to be a more ambiguous platform, which is just about sharing, you know, what it is that you do through whatever means you want to. And we'll return to Johnny Keeley in a moment. But I did say we'd receive some thoughtful and considered feedback to this episode going out within our Facebook group, which I will link to so that you can read the, the full accounts of everything said since some of it went into great detail. And I'm I'm really appreciative for that. And I'll come back to more of this as the show continues today. But let's start with Christopher O'Sullivan, who wrote, Personally speaking, I don't understand how it works. I have two accounts, one for my usual rubbish, and I've just started a new one for my lazy photographer project. I can't seem to plug myself into other platforms to get followers, so it's used more as a record of photos than anything else. It's also part of an experiment. 
seeing if my photos gain likes purely on the image, not because friends see I've posted. Will Simmons, it'd be great to have something that sits kind of between Flickr and Instagram, easy to explore and find new photographers and hashtags, but without the relentless hunger for likes and follows and the move to more viral TikTok videos. And Sue Sayer, also on Flickr, is perhaps an alternative. Neil, for what it's worth, I joined Flickr in 2011. Since then, I've made friends with many people who are still friends today. We've met up regularly, excluding the pandemic, and I'll meet up again. I feel this is uh, still an important factor to consider. Has this happened on Instagram? No, is the short answer. I, for one, find the tags a trial on Instagram, but I do them on Flickr without any fuss. 16 nine images apparently don't sit well on Instagram either. Probably another reason why I can't get any enthusiasm for it, but I still scroll by on it. More of your thoughts coming up. You mentioned in another video this short sentence of recommendations. Now, this really did interest me. Uh, men mentioned by Adam again, you wondered whether it might see off hashtags. And, of course, Instagram is known for copying other successful ideas. Uh, YouTube uses recommendations. Do you think that's what Instagram is going to do then? I do think it is. Um, again, my my title was maybe slightly divisive, um, you know, because the title of the video is the end of hashtags, or at yeah. least that's what it says in the image. Yeah. Um, really, I just think that once in Instagram's recommendation system kicks in, that will be, in my opinion, the primary discovery method for most people, much like on YouTube. I mean, I, like I said, I don't search hashtags. Twitter, I don't search hashtags. I may search them if I'm looking for a particular subject or I might just, you know, click on them from a trending page, but they are not at the forefront. Whereas right now on Instagram, if you're sharing photos, the only way of discovering a subject that you want to, uh, you know, consume, uh, if you will, is through the hashtags. Mm -hmm. If you go to Reels, that's much different. You know, they're already using a much, you know, I'm not a developer at Instagram, but what I would call a more modern way of discovering content, which would be, you know, you look at one thing that you maybe chose to look at, and then as you scroll through, you see similar stuff, you know, just how TikTok works. It was a bit clunky, wasn't it, really, hashtags? Because you had to think of different hashtags each time. And I have to be honest, I... I uh, I lose the will to live trying to think of 30 hashtags and let alone try to make them different or at least think, OK, let me put them in a different order just in case it recognises an order system that's going on in my hashtagging here. Recommendations would be so much easier. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, there's a few things that may come with recommendations. There's a few things that I, I really love about other platforms that serve through recommendations. YouTube, content that you worked hard on six months ago might suddenly appear on people's feeds. Yeah. I really like that. I can imagine that happening with reels. If something coming back or maybe somebody, um, you know, you might be, you might look at quite a few of someone's reels and Instagram notices that you have viewed maybe three or four of this person's reels, but you don't actually follow them, but you've viewed the most recent four. The natural thing for Instagram to do would be to grab one of their older ones and show that to you because mm. it knows that you're enjoying their content. So I can see that happening. So yeah, personally, I think that recommendations is a great thing for creators because it means that it rewards good content that keeps people doing whatever it is that platform wants them to do. What are people doing wrong when they when they post and they're, they're seeing the, the regular sort of 60, 70 uh, likes and they're thinking oh, what do i what do i need to do what 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 how how can i be seen if it if my hashtags aren't right if it, it is my is my content engaging enough staring at the wall of the same numbers every single time i don't think most people who are serious about their content and put work into it i don't think they're doing anything wrong i don't i, I really don't i think that there are a lot of people who have very high expectations and maybe there are a few people who have quite a high sense of entitlement who think that just because they're on the platform that they're going to get, you know, massive views. Like people message me say, Hey, like I, I'm only getting literally someone said something along the lines of, you know, I'm only getting, you know, 10,000 views on my reels. I've got like 70 followers. And I'm like, you know, that, that's amazing. You know, <laughs> what do you, what do you, more, more do you want? Um, you know, or they'll say like, Hey, my reel got 5,000 views and I'm not getting any followers. And they'd be like, well, you know, that's not how that works. Mm. I think that for the most part, people who are creating good content are really just suffering from the massive saturation of great content on Instagram. It yeah. is on every, you know, on every doorstep of Instagram, there is incredible content. And it blew up recently that like great content just exploded and it's everywhere. Amazing photography everywhere. I've become, you know, quite awfully desensitized to it. You know, I remember even just two years ago, 
I would see a photo and I would stare at it for a very long time. Mm. Whereas nowadays I don't look at it for so long because I'm like, oh, that's that location. Oh, that they've oh they've taken that shot. Mm. You know, I, I think people discount that far too often. You know, if I see a shot from a particular location in the UK, I've seen it before. I've taken that photo and. Lots of people took that photo before me, and now I know how they felt when they saw my photo. Mm. And I, I, you know, I'm not a location snob. I think that if you're starting out photography, definitely, definitely go and photograph these amazing locations that have been done time and time again because it's really fun. It's easy and it's fun, and it's just such a buzz. I've started liking uh, to to see people that let me into their life a bit more. You do. You do a bit on your, you know, not, not all the time, but occasionally there'll, there'll be an image you think, oh, there's there's Johnny. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, or, or there's your partner. Or, you know, that, that b- a bit of a life where you think, oh, he's, he's kind of letting me in now. I feel, ki- I feel quite comfortable with this. Uh, and are you, is that a good thing to do? Yeah, I really do think so. And I think, right, there's, there's a few things that, that are really important, I think. And I know that I need to share much more of my world. Mm. The The difficult thing is for me is that my world is mostly kids. Uh, I literally <laughs> threw my kids in the bath. And my partner's in the house. Don't worry, they're not still there to do this interview. You yeah. know, that I quickly, you know, I jumped on Zoom. And, you know, that that is life. I got back from work, jumped out of the van. I quickly saw my camera. So I'm const- it's flat out at the moment. I've yeah. got three kids, two very little ones. Yeah. So that that's a big reason why I don't personally share more. However, something that always bothers me is that I tell other people to share more to share, yeah. on my YouTube channel, <laughs> you know, and I need to start putting my videos, you know, like this is the optimal way of doing it. But, you know, if you don't want to, it won't harm you. But yeah, I, I think the way to keep followers, and I hate saying it this way because it feels so reductive, but the way to keep people is to let them get to know you yeah. because there are people who, you know, if my Instagram was deleted tomorrow, I wouldn't care about the people following me that I lost because I know that if they really care, they'll come find me somewhere else. Mm. But I don't know the names of some of the people who I follow and, you know, care about their world. I don't know them. I see them looking at my stories and I look at their stories, but I've never communicated with them. And I would be genuinely upset to not know what was going on for them because, like, you know, you start to and not so much care. You do kind of care about people, but it's more just that you're interested. You, you know, you want the best for people. You, you see someone's, you know, they might be running a race and you'd be like, oh, yeah, go on, you can do it, you know, in your head. You might not communicate with them at all. So I think it is a really interesting thing that we're probably the first people alive today that are dealing with that interesting thing where you're looking in on someone's life. Yeah. If you want to keep people interested, keep showing them things. Yeah. Uh, but, c- yeah. Cause well, I think, I think social photographers forget that a bit. It's, it's very, let, let's take the wedding um, genre. It's very easy just to post lots and lots of pictures of weddings, uh, which are all beautiful and wonderful locations and beautiful brides and wonderful grooms and whatever. But, but actually you're not seeing the photographer, are you? No, exactly. And, and, you know, I think wedding photography is a funny one, isn't it? Because it, the photography has to be incredible, yeah. it, you know, just by the nature of the job. Yeah. Uh, you've got the harshest critic right in front of you who's going to be looking at those photos and paying for those photos. So yeah. it has to be really good. Um, so, of course, the content is going to be incredible. And you're right, it is difficult because you're also really busy. But I think for wedding photographers, you know, I'm sure there are moments throughout the day, which is what most people will do, where they'll share things and, and you know if, if i was a wedding photographer i'd be sharing things like interesting things like maybe uh, you know centerpieces of tables and you know interesting things on the tables provided that you were okay to share it you know mm. uh, because you think like what, what are my followers interested in you know if, if if my followers are people getting married they would be interested in that because they you know they're looking for inspiration or mm. if they're other wedding photographers they might you know be interested because they you know they know the world they want to see what you're up to they want to see maybe what meal mm. there is you know all those sorts of things so you could share a lot, but at the same time, they suffer from, I'm sure, from just being flat out on their feet all day. And it's difficult to find the energy to be energetic on stories. And we're back with Johnny for the final part of my chat with him in a moment. I did say I'd be leaning on some comments received prior to this episode going out. The whole thread is in the Photography Daily Facebook group. But here goes with some more. Elias Camaratos, although I have an IG account and recognise the potential value of it being seen by clients, I can't say I use it much neither to post nor to passionately follow others. Some reasons are terms of service, the difficulty in posting which has to be done from a phone and not directly from my Lightroom or computer in general, which, by the way, you can now do, Elias, but it, it's uh, clunky in my mind. Dennis Skyam threw in a link 
for you on that one. Then Dennis Skyam posted some of his reasons to a considered read. It is long and it's worth reading from a photographer who built an audience of 100,000, then deleted his account overnight. But from Dennis, quick preface, he says, I first joined Instagram in 2007 before it was acquired by Facebook. And my opinions are, of course, coloured by that. I think what a lot of people miss in regards to Instagram is that its success is owed to going into service at the right time. It was an opportune moment where an image sharing service could attract both creative types and the public at large. That moment is now gone. And that's why the IG copies like Vero, IM, Stella and whatever they're called will not succeed. Instagram was great back in the day because it wasn't just photographers stroking each other's egos, but ordinary people being exposed to and consuming the photographs they posted. The social media landscape has shifted, and it's naive to think we'll ever get back to that golden age. Neil, when you say social media platform that would serve the needs of the photographic community, does this not already exist? To my ears, this is exactly what Flickr and 500px is. But the thing is, they only service the needs of the photographic community, not the public. But Dennis had some solution uh, thoughts as he writes. If I were to get in on making a service today to try and recapture what Instagram used to be, here's a few points I think are important. And this is, by the way, where his attention to detail on the subject was fascinating. Mentioning community, mission and vision, the algorithm, rewarding quality engagement. And here's a subject that always raises the hackles, or is it in many ways heckles? Those influencer people. And I shall uh, read this word for word. Ban influencers, said Dennis. These people are a plague. And the rise of their influencer culture is, in my view, a large part of why Instagram started to go downhill. This should have been smothered in its infancy instead of being actively supported. There's no creative value in these creators and beauty gurus, fitness freaks and the like. They should be banned from shilling their products and making filthy lucre on the platform. Close quote. But it's, it's interesting to me, and I know a few influencers, that uh, they are almost embarrassed now to be known as that. The Friday Photo Walk mailbag is open. I would love your thoughts about this genre of, and Dennis, you may not agree with me, but it is a genre now, I think, of photography. I can see Dennis raising his eyebrow. Read the whole of Dennis's account on this. He had me nodding away like the nodding toy bulldog in a... Churchill insurance advert and if you don't live in the UK you can probably still guess what that looks like but my thanks Dennis and our contributors in the Facebook group so far to their thoughts on Instagram shall we return to Johnny do you shoot for Instagram Johnny specifically are, are a lot of the posts made for the platform yeah I'd say so I I, I, I optimize my shot I shoot portrait yeah but at the same time I don't head out I don't go oh I'm running out of Instagram shots I I, I go out probably to be outside I, I but when i when i am taking photos i'm thinking of a four four by five crop and i'm thinking of portrait images yeah. so I, I guess you could say i'm shooting for instagram however i i genuinely do just prefer framing that way i think if i was if I was shooting prints i would still um, you know I, maybe it's just that i've shot them that way but i, <laughs> I prefer portrait images now i, I didn't I, there was a, a joke i like uh before i used to say i was you know shoot, i shoot landscapes in portrait you know <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I think I think I do just like a lot of people. The, this currency of likes, you started way back uh, when your first pick had seventy likes. Profiles rising, so too is the engagement. It's a regular one k plus of likes now, easily sometimes much much more. How important is this to you as a photographer? Um, it's a good measure it, as a, as a photographer on Instagram. It's a good measure of how well I'm communicating yeah. with my audience. But the actual number of likes in terms of me showing it to someone else isn't important. But I think comments is something that I care about a lot. I try to respond to as many comments as is possible. Mm. It's not always possible. On my last post, I actually got, um, I'm pretty sure I got action blocked by Instagram because I was responding to them all in one go, which was interesting. But I was told that that is the case. You know, that does happen. Action blocked means? If you do too many actions in one very short space of time, oh, right. it will stop letting you do actions you know and, oh. and when i say that i mean basically i was responding to all my comments in one go from the desktop i responded to about 80 and then instagram just started saying to me sorry couldn't post comments couldn't post comment i just see that as comment. diligent that you were actually bothering to spend time responding yeah <laughs> i mean from i mean i was i was going quick you know i wasn't yeah. spamming i was replying you know 
in a way that I felt was yeah. uh, appropriate to each comment. But I can also understand that Instagram probably has a limit of the amount yeah. you can say. Sorry, uh, I, but, I, yeah, I, I get that now. But I interrupted you as we were talking about likes and the currency of them. Yeah, and you know, I I always used to when I started the account, I did actually get a few messages from people saying, "How are you getting such strong engagement?" Because yeah. I was getting around. I was trying to keep it around 30, 40%. Yeah. It's now, it's now dropped, which is natural for a, a big, well, I say a bigger account, bigger than it was account. It's not actually that big compared to most of the people that I follow. But again, I don't see it as, as something like a trophy. I do see it as a, as a measurement of how well I'm communicating with people and, you know, how many people are actually seeing it. There's a YouTuber you're probably aware of called Chris Howe that, uh, mm. uh, that posted a film. It was quite clickbaity as well. You know, the, the, the end of Instagram is nigh. I could almost see people mm. with, with boards walking along Oxford Street with, uh, with, with that, that on, the, on their board. But he did make some good points, actually. Some people think that Instagram should reward their creators, like, like TikTok, like YouTube, um, that the reason people are, are leaving them these will be creators, of course, that, that want to earn from it, is that, that perhaps Instagram have forgotten that they're there because the creators have created for them and, and, and made this fantastic content for them. What, what do you feel about that? I think, uh, you know, let's take that video from Chris Howe. You know, he, I think he did make some really good points. I think that people in his position, you know, I don't work with that many brands or anything like that, no. um, but pe- people in his position have... Uh, have been you know had a really difficult time because for them it is a living it's a part of their living that they they manage their lifestyle based on their income and if that income changes it's a problem you know regardless of how much that income is so if you are working with brands and stuff and all of a sudden for no reason if 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 you're if the numbers that your brand deals are based on change for no reason reason other than the way instagram is being run that must be incredibly frustrating Mm -hmm. Imagine if you're at work every day, you know, you're, you've, you've been at your, at your job, you know, five, six years and you're getting paid a certain amount. And all of a sudden they just cut your pay yeah. and you'd be like, hold on a minute. I'm, I'm working way harder than I was at the beginning, but I'm earning less. That's, that's what's happening to people who, who are earning money through brand work. I, I think that must be an incredibly frustrating thing. Well, well so have Instagram, who, who incidentally make a huge amount of money from advertising. And I, I don't begrudge that because they have to put food on the table too. But, but the point was that platforms like YouTube recognised that great content, um, and, and we can argue to the cows come home about using the word content when we're talking about art, but great content brings people to Instagram's table and and they, that's YouTube, well, they reward that with a scheme that essentially pays its creators a share of that advertising. Or is it that the business model is so different with Instagram that this, this wouldn't or couldn't ever really work? No, I, th- I think we have to remember that the engine behind everything is Facebook. And Facebook is the only platform, in my opinion, that really leans on its users to not consume ads, but buy ads. Yeah. You know, Twitter kind of does it, but it never really worked. YouTube kind of does it, but it never really worked. Facebook is a platform that, yeah, they serve ads, but really I think they probably make a significant amount from charging, you know, bands with 4,000 followers to to put 10 quid on a post, you know, that's what it's all about. And so that residue exists in Instagram. You know, they charge their users. I see it all the time, you know, photographers who have a picture just pops up on my feed and I'm like, well, that's, you know, it's a nice image. Mm. And, I, and I've been there. I've been like, okay, so mm. that person's promoted that image because they like it and they were trying to get followers and it's not going to work for them. But, you know, that's what Instagram is. So the point I'm, I suppose I'm making is that Instagram is shifting probably from that understanding that charging your creators is not as good as paying your creators. Yeah. And I think that's where they're going. I think that's a mistake that they've made is to not shift sooner because, you know, Instagram is more like YouTube and TikTok than it is like Facebook. Hmm. It might work because businesses are on Facebook because, you know, Facebook's the town square, you know, hmm. it's not, you know, it's not the shopping mall. So there's loads of people on Facebook. So it makes more sense to do micro promotions, but on platforms like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, it doesn't make as much sense. What you what what makes more sense, and it's exactly what they said they were going to be doing, is paying creators to come up with better content and make it so that they can invest themselves in the platform and get rewarded for it. So there'll, there'll be people listening now that are thinking, hang on, I've got no business interest in this platform. I just like my friends to see my stuff. 
I think with what we've been talking about, recommendations, that might help. Uh, and and actually, this isn't the death of Instagram at all, is it? No, it's just a shift. You know, Instagram, they can't, you know, it's like you can't get a ship to turn a sharp corner. It's not possible. Yeah. You know, you, you you can't you can't radically change Instagram. It's going to change gradually. There's that analogy of the, what is it? If you boil a frog, it doesn't know it's boiling until it's boiled. Whatever that analogy is, I've never heard that um, one. But I'll take. You've never heard that it. analogy. No. Yeah, <laughs> probably sounds really weird to someone who doesn't yeah. <laughs> hasn't yeah. heard that before. Uh, maybe Google it if you're listening. But the point I'm trying to make is that things will change, and for those people who just want to show their friends pictures, photos, you know, I'm sure that would just be exactly as it is. Yeah. In fact, they're, they're adding more stuff around groups as far as I've seen in the leaks you know that adding more stuff around groups and group chats mm. there I think they are by the looks of it going to be adding clubhouse to Instagram on a much bigger scale you know audio only group rooms things like that yeah. I think that they're bringing more community features to the platform so for people who you know want to have group chats um, and you know things like you know what discord's great for you know for me discord was really important through lockdowns you know me and my friends used to just jump on there play computer games chat yeah. sometimes we jump on it and they'd be playing games when i wasn't you know that sort of thing yeah. i think they're going to be bringing much more features like that but for the average person who just uses it for fun and they don't have any business interest in it you know it's, it's fine my thanks to johnny keely and of course i'll link to uh, the film that really started this discussion with him and the others that he's made since uh, in a moment, Helen Jones Florio on an Instagram project that piqued my interest from the moment I saw it initially. A few more thoughts on the Facebook group about the subject of our relationship with Instagram. Nanto Sealands, I noticed that Pinterest never really gets mentioned, yet virtually every time I do a Google image search, Pinterest results come up. I'd be curious to hear if anybody uses it and has had any success. Eric Delorme on Instagram, it's a closed, walled garden. You want to link to something interesting outside of Instagram? Tough beans. You want to link to your portfolio, blog, whatever? Tough beans. Your only option is to put link in bio, which 99% of your viewers will never see, never mind click through. Eric had many thoughts atop this, and I shall probably use them on the photo wall conditions, Eric. Your thoughts on privacy, data collection, and the very awkward way in which you can curate a feed, including multiple deletion and so on. Again, considered thoughts, and uh, they'll be getting a mention on, on our photo walk. And then finally, Dominique Martel. I suppose the question is, who do you want to share your images with? People you know, people you have something in common with, people you care about, people whose opinion you care about, or just random people? Some of the above, all of the above, none of the above. If you know the answer to that question, then that can help guide you to the best place to share your photos. We're with Helen Jones Florio in a moment. Until October 3rd, 2021, I'm Stroke. We're proud to partner a photographic outdoor exhibition in the south of England called Photo Swindon. And as of the date of this episode, we're very much looking forward to Martin Parr's contribution. It's free and each photographer has their time in various parks and open spaces of Swindon to show a story, one at a time. If you'd like more information, you can go to Photo Swindon on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. So, I want to end with some words about Instagram, but moreover about her project, actually, from Helen Jones Florio, who's enjoying using the platform. A note about the show today, Human Nature, I guess, dictated that when I asked the question, what do you think of Instagram, generally you receive primarily where something's perhaps not firing on all cylinders, rather than, sure, it's a smooth ride, love it, starts every time for me, nature. You rarely phone a phone-in show to say how well something or someone is doing, but I do think there are some very valid points made by our contributors today. If you're an influencer and still with us, I'd be interested on your thoughts very much about the platform and what you've heard today and the way we view it, perhaps, the platform this is, as photographers. So to Helen Jones Florio. Now, I adore the project, probably because it's exactly the one I would love to have started myself. You know my favourite advertising campaign, the one about the quick-drying weather sealing varnish doing exactly what it says on the tin? Well, Helen's Doors and Shopfronts um, is, well, as a project, it does exactly what it says on the tin. I'm fascinated by the pictures she makes of doors mainly in West Africa and Malta. Yes, there's an exotic nature as they're not in my neighbourhood, but so many of the pictures make me wonder what is behind the door, seriously and genuinely. 
And if I'm asking questions about a picture, I'm engaged in the traditional sense, not the new language of engagement. Her Instagram profile about the project has a modest following, but I think as you're just about to find out, that works for Helen, and she's not in a race. And happy for the brick by brick by brick experience. So Helen, doors, how long have you been shooting them? Do you know, I've been doing it for, I was looking back at some of my archive stuff and I've probably, been, I've been interested in them, I'd say 15 years or so. I was looking back at some even from the UK, from New York, from travels. There's always been a, like a, I've always had this kind of, I don't know, fascination with them. So something that grabs my attention, it might be a little tiny detail or it might be the whole thing or, yeah, so for, I'd say about 15 years. Is it the door itself? Is it the, oh, that looks like a, an attractive door or is it the, um, I wonder what's behind that door? It's that. It's a bit of both. But I, I always think, you know, I've got this hashtag stories behind doors. So it's it, it's a bit of both, um, especially with with Malta, because Malta's just fascinating. Yeah. Got all these amazing old buildings. And um, I did that again, a hashtag thing, disappearing Malta. And um, it was always I always wanted to follow those up with. And I did actually meet some people along the way, some Maltese people as I was photographing doors. I even got invited into a couple of homes to look at these incredible houses inside. that are still still there, fortunately, behind these beautiful doors, old doors. So, yeah. Yeah, it was always it's it's a bit of both it's the the initial reaction to seeing the door and then wondering what the story is behind it so it's interesting you've, you've been asked in a couple of times have you have you never yeah. sort of knocked on the door uh and, and, and uh, actually asked yourself to look around. There was one time actually in Valletta, I did go looking for this this frontage on this shop that I'd photographed when we first got there in 2014. And uh, we went up and down this street, which I knew it, it was from from the GPS on the on the phone on the on the photograph. There was people sitting outside. There's Maltese people like sitting outside their their house. And I did ask one of the guys, "Is look, can you?" tell me where it is he said oh it's 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 gone it's 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 demolished and he said but i can show you where it was but that's about as near as i've got but i'm getting a bit brave i'm actually standing and and uh, you know like i said if i stand there long enough and take a photograph people are curious they'll they'll tell me a little story about it or whether you know their family lived there or whatever you know but yeah i'm building up to that one well you (laughs) you you were based in malta i know you've you've um now relinquished that base but you you obviously have a place in in the gambia um, and yeah. most of these doors are Gambian and Maltese, although you did say that you've shot some in, in the UK. Are you Is that now really your focus, that they, they have to be... They're a bit more exotic, perhaps, than 24 hour Casey Avenue? Yeah, I think that's what it is. There's something... Even it's like... The, I was just doing a blog post about this yesterday, and to me, there's just something... Because it's even though I've been travelling back and forward and living there for over 20 years, I'm still fascinated by these, like I say, unintentionally quirky shop fronts, hand-painted, you know, misspellings, um, totally unintentional. I mean, there's there's just something more exciting and colourful as well. I think that's it. And the light is different and, yeah. I, I so, bet you're a proper pain to be in a car with because you'll be driving along on your way somewhere and you'll say, stop the car, I need to get out, there's a door. You're reading my blog post without me even posting it. Jason's got, my husband's got really used to me just, oh, we're on the back of the motorbike, I'm on the back of the motorbike, stop! Would it be would it be fair to say, Helen, this is, I mean, 15 years have been shooting these. Has this, has this become sort of, um, oddly, your life's project? It has in a way. It's not, it's, I mean, we, you know, I've got a working day job with, with Jason, you know, we do our, our documentary and, and our NGO work, etc. But this is something, it's my, it's mine. It's my, my passion. It really is a passion. I love it. And I never get bored. I've got, honestly, I've got thousands of thousands of doors, <laughs> mainly from Malta and Gambia, because that's where I've spent the most of my time over the last 10, 15 years. So it's going to be them. But then I might go to a little town in the States and they've got, amazing old doors you know and yeah it has it it has become a a kind of it's kind of running parallel with what we're doing but it also it kind of fits it going back to stories behind doors um we've been photographing the victims in gambia of the former regime as you know and um there's i've been doing a started a series a couple of years ago and it's something we'll do more of when we get back is i've been we've been interviewing the people inside the houses the, the victim and survivors and i've also been photographing their doors from from the outside so there's and there's a little there's definitely a little story which i know i'm thinking about not asking people but i do know those stories there's going to come a point when i do do my own exhibition on the yeah. doors and I'm, I'm i kind of really want to see them um i've got some good ideas i think i think the good ideas so you know about having some of them blown up and mm. as if you can actually walk into them you know kind of life-size type of thing 
Um, well, what are you what are you photographing them on? Because I, I would imagine there's a fair amount of iPhoneography or, or yeah, smartphoneography yeah. going on, but but yeah. but but also maybe your DSLRs. I'm I'm, I'm intrigued as to what yeah. you use. I use my camera a lot. I have to say, just because it's often we're moving around we might not necessarily be on an assignment or whatever so i'm don't always carry the camera which you know i should but i don't always so i have the, this amazing you know iphone and i use that quite a lot but i have got i have done shot a lot of them on, on the canon 5d as well what i do as well is i take the the door with a phone and then i might go back and shoot it with the camera and if i've got the camera i'll do both i'll do it with the phone and with the camera um with the phone camera and then a, the 5d but um yeah, I'm definitely going to think more about doing that, especially with the, the exhibition thing is coming more into the foreground. So I definitely want to um, make sure I have, I can, you know, I can I make them big enough to, you know, big enough prints. Let me rewind. Uh, I should have done this right at the start. I've done this in the in the wrong order. Um, mm -hmm. Right at the start, the, the first door, which could have been 24 RKC Revenue, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> from, from where did it come from? Where where did you think, oh, hang on, this, this, this is something? Uh, you know what? I went to... It would have been about 13 years ago or so. I went, went, we went to New Mexico, New Mexico, and um, we went up to Taos. I never know what, what that is. We went to an Indian re reservation. And this is when I was looking back at my archive and I realised how long I've been doing them. Even I've got a few before then, but this was when it really, there were some amazing, really old doors. So that's, that's kind of where I think it really, hmm. it really started properly i think from then on i started like oh, okay looking out more and more when i went back when i got back home and those were all done on the camera and when i got back and i looked at them i was like oh wow really mm. these are really quite something and um not my photographs necessarily but the doors <laughs> no no your, your photographs as well i think that in instagram th this has been your playground really for this project yeah um, yeah. I know we've talked on this program a lot of late about how Instagram is changing and how it's mm. not necessarily going to be the, the picture platform that it once was and all the furore that's going on about that at the moment. Aside from that, how important has Instagram as a platform for you been for this project? Um, you know, I've just put it out there to see what what comes back really it's not i'm not kind of looking so oh, how many people like it i mean yeah i just it's something i can use it's free it's not free by time it takes my time of course that's not necessarily free but it's it's something I, i'm just curious to see to put the work out there and see if there is any kind of feedback from it and just and to be honest it's kind of like it's for me really just to yeah just to see what comes back. I think I was doing it more and more to begin with. I was really like posting a lot almost every day and then I kind of slowed down. And now I'm to the point of doing that every sort of maybe four or five days just to keep it current. And also I'm curious because I'm, I'm doing photography prints as well and I have sold a couple from, from the Instagram feed. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's something I want to do, want to look at doing more of. I'm, I'm going to use a really terrible television, local, te well, it's not even local, a national television pun as I'm now calling them. When does the when does the wait for it, Helen? Here it comes. When does the door close on this project? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, that's another question I've asked myself. Is like with the Gambia doors, how far can I go? Because I like I said, I have thousands in the archive, and the same with the the disappearing multi multi one. And um, it's uh, multi we've left, so I, I I doubt if I'll ever go back there. But I still have got hundreds of doors that I've I haven't put out there yet. But Gambia, I, I don't think I'll stop as long as we're there and as long as I see another door that I like, another storefront, um, you know, and we pr travel to other parts of West Africa as well. And, you know, I've got some from Senegal and, and, and Ghana. And so, you know, if, if something catches my eye, I don't think it's ever going to really stop. But they're there. They're in every little village you go to, little town or city or, you know, so it's, I can't really see how the door's ever going to close. <laughs> Not really, not fully. My thanks to Helen Jones Florio and, of course, Johnny Keeley and our Facebook group contributors. All links on the show page today. And I recommend you go read the, the detailed thoughts of those who commented within that group. And that's it for today. Keep sending in your questions, your feedback and photo stories. And, of course, what you feel about Instagram. I've got a feeling this is probably a subject that's uh, going to continue uh, on the Friday Photo Walk. Send to studio at photographydaily.show so that I can feature you in the mailbag edition that is the Friday Photo Walk. On that note, remember you can also send in pictures from your own photo walks to appear on the episode's show page online with links to your website or Instagram 
should you so wish. So that's studio at photographydaily.show. Music on the show from the incredible artlist.io. And I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you, and talking with you next time. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.